And the nice thing is thanks to these protocol helper libraries and the like, writing such a script took us, it is 46 lines long. So let's take a quick look at what it does. We have a description, we have a sample output, these are for the NSE doc page I showed you. We have a port rule, tells you when it should run because it would be terribly inefficient if RPC info.nse was running against every port. This says only run if it's port 111 or if version detection detects it as RPC bind and for either TCP or UDP protocols. If that matches, it runs this action. The key line in this whole script is this one that says rpc.helper.rpcinfo. It grabs that information. If it failed, it gives you an error message. It sorts it into a pretty table, sorts the results, and prints it out to Nmap's output. And sorry, that was a real quick overview. But as you can see, you can do a script that actually does really useful things. Half of it is just documentation, and the other half is pretty simple. So I could go on with all 131 of these scripts and show you them one by one. But like I said before, it seemed like it would be much fun, more fun to have a live demonstration to show just how easy it is. And so David is going to write one right in front of us that actually does useful things and uh, execute it and hope that it works. Thank you, David. Thank you. All right, so to demonstrate how easy it is to write NSE scripts, um, I set up a little example here and we're going to work our way through it. Anyone in this audience a programmer? If you're, if you're a programmer, you can write NSE scripts. So before I left home, I set up a webcam pointing out my window at uh, downtown Denver and I want to find it and see what's on the webcam picture. The problem is I'm on a dynamic IP address so I don't know exactly where it is, but we're going to write a script to find it. Before I left, I found out some attributes of this webcam that can help us fingerprint it. It uses THTTP to serve and it serves up a file called cam.jpg. So we're going to write a script that looks for those two things and finds my webcam. So we're going to start, let's call this HTTP webcam.nse. Sorry? Oh. <laughs> Let's like redo this. <laughs> All right, so the customary extension is NSE. Every script needs a description. Ooh, syntax highlighting, sexy. <laughs> so this script is going to be in the safe category because we're not doing anything weird. Also, I would put this in discovery. Every script needs a rule. In this case, we're going to use something called a port rule, which decides when the script is going to run. And this, in this case, we just want it to run when the port number is 80. So this is real simple. Return port number equals equals 80. And then finally, the action is where the script really does its work. Again, it takes two parameters, the host and the port. Now we're going to be using HTTP functions, so we need to require that library. This is just like an import in any other language. Let's define a local variable here for our response. And we want to retrieve cam.jpg. Now let's just test what we got from the response here. If response.status, we're just going to make sure that it worked. And response.status is not 404. And remember what else we're looking for? Response.header, we want to check that the server header exists. Just a minute. And string.match is a standard Lua function. And we're going to match it against the pattern THTPD. Then it's easy to return results from an NSE script. You just return a string. In case we don't have any results, we just return nothing and then the script isn't going to report anything. So let's run it. 
I'm going to add a couple of flags on here to make this a little faster, so pay attention if you have trouble with the speedier NMAP scans. Turn off reverse name resolution. Um, turn off ping scanning. We only want port 80. Only tell me about hosts with an open port. We want to run HTTP webcam. The address range I'm going to scan. So, the address range I'm going to scan is um, this one. Oh, do you have to zoom it? Oh, maybe. Oh, control C a bunch of times. I gotcha. Okay, thanks. And we're going to scan these addresses. Let's write the results to a file in case it scrolls off the screen. And when you're testing your scripts for the first time, you always want to add the debug flag in case you're a programmer who makes mistakes. It will tell you where. It'll give you a backtrace to your syntax errors. Yeah. Right. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> So what is that? One of the uh, virtues of a programmer is hubris. <laughs> All right. There we go. Ah, oh, that's the problem. We need to update the voice recognition. OK, so Nmap is fast. Let's look at the log. There we go. This is the address of the webcam, 66.7.171.5. And that's how easy it is to write an NSC script. Let's take a look at it. Huh. OK, so let's not let this scare us. This is just an opportunity for us Nmap developers to do what we do best, which is scan. <laughs> I want to show you a script that I've been working on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you follow me? <laughs> All right, so let's go through this one real quick. You're gonna, the structure is going to be familiar to you. Description, guesses, HTTP passwords, categories. I can't really, with a good conscience, put this in safe anymore. <laughs> put it in auth category. We need the HTTP library again. I, this is another password. This is our username password database library, which all our brute scripts use. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in a second. Port rule is exactly the same. And the action is pretty simple, just a few technical details here. We have a username iterator, a password iterator. We have a nested loop here. We're getting cam.jpg. The only difference here is we're passing it a username and password. And if we get a result that is not 401 authentication required, we're going to return username colon password. So let's run that scan. It's going to be very similar. Just take off a few of this stuff, some of this stuff we don't need. And, oh, change the name of the script. Thank you. And let her rip. So the thing about password cracking is it tends to take a long time. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about our username password database library. Whenever we're shipping databases with Nmap, we like to base them on real results. You know, it's easy to go download somebody's random password database, but you don't know how good it is. Um, you don't really know where it came from. You don't know if it's going to help you in your situation. So we try to base this on, hey, that was too fast. I'm not done talking about the password database. I want to say that our password database is based on some real measured results um, from some like public information, some data breaches, password disclosures, and things like that. We've curated them and built them into a pretty decent list that you'll get if you download Nmap. So that's what we've used here. So now in 25.90 seconds, it has cracked the password. Um, username web, password monkey, that's in honor of the goon who introduced us. Let's give it a try. <laughs> and there we go.
All right, so I had to, this was, um, I, I made this script very small so it could be understood in a short time. Before I add this script to Nmap, there are a few changes I'm going to make. The port rule has to be more generic. You know, it's lame to just match port 80. Want to match all the common HTTP ports and also any ports that version detection is found to be HTTP. We have a library called short port that makes that very easy. I would add script arguments so we don't have to hard code cam.jpg. You could just specify that on the command line. Add documentation for usage and output so it can go on our, our online documentation portal. And finally, this is very important, I want it to be able to cache credentials in our registry so that other scripts that run later through our dependency system have access to these. Now let me turn it back over to Fyodor um, with some final notes. All right. We're going to just run through these last slides really quickly. First of all, we have a lot of stuff coming in NSE. We have scripts in the queue. We have an idea for scripts that can run before and actually accumulate targets. So you could do like a zone transfer or a broadcast ping or the like and hand those targets straight to Nmap. We have Zenmap NSE integration. That was going to be on the coming soon slide, but instead it's here because we actually put it in the repository just about three days ago. David was working with a fellow named Kurubakan Sampath to create this extra panel in Zenmap which shows you all the scripts we have available, what categories they're in, the descriptions, what arguments they can take and lets you set those. So it's a nice feature if you don't have all the scripts memorized. I wanted to mention credit where credit is due. I wrote Nmap 13 years ago and sometimes get way more of the credit than I deserve. It's really an open source project in the true sense with tons of contributors all over the world. And this is just a list of the people who've written scripts for NSE, which is just a subset of the contributor set as a whole. Final notes, the slides are up now at insecure.org slash presentations. You've got to scroll down a little bit to get to the 2010 part. Here's the URLs for downloading Nmap, the NSE doc portal, the system docs, and for Q&A, we're going to take that right across the hall in 118. Thank you very much. Thank you.